pretty spicy. Yeah. Uh, Mostly like around like mid-like five or six. Five or six? Oh, so it's not like crazy spicy. No, it's not crazy spicy yet. Oh, okay. Uh, but I could get the sauce on the side? Yes. Hey everybody. Do you ever go to restaurants that you know nothing about? I do that quite a bit. I've been going around this area and I've noticed this restaurant. I don't know much about it except it said noodles and bowls. It's a pretty small place in the southwest part of town. This is on Rainbow and Robindale, just south of Warm Springs. A lot of times I'm not planning on making a YouTube video. Sometimes I'm just trying the food, but usually I'm taking video footage or taking photos. I've thrown away a lot of videos and photos, but this one kind of interested me. They have a pretty big menu. It's a pretty small place. And from what I understand, they have rice dishes and ramen here, but the menu was pretty extensive. So I thought I'd give this place a try and see what they have to offer. They have some pretty high ceilings here. Decoration is predominantly Japanese, so it seems like a Japanese ramen shop. Not very big, as most of them are not. The first thing I tried was an appetizer, takoyaki. The bonito flakes are supposed to be moving because of the hot takoyaki, but these aren't moving. I tried to see if they were going to move a little bit, but the dish was pretty lukewarm. It wasn't very hot, which explains why they weren't moving. Compared to other takoyaki I've had, these were not filled with the usual gooey batter. These were more hardened and more like breaded. These kind of reminded me of hush puppies. I give these about a 2 out of 5. They have three kinds of bao buns here, kimchi pork, chashu, and katsu. They're $3 each. I only got two kinds. I got the kimchi and pork because I know that pork belly goes really well with kimchi. The other one was the chashu. Not the usual chashu bao bun that I'm used to. The chashu was ground up or chopped up and mixed with some sort of a sauce. It was served with a deep fried or tempera fried eggplant. The bao buns are really tasty. Usually I love these things, but here it was a little bit different. I think it would have been better if they went with the traditional chashu, the soft pork slices with a little bit of crunchy cucumber or vegetable with a tangy sauce. That would have done the trick. The mushiness of this chashu ground up didn't quite do it for me. The pork belly and kimchi was pretty good. The richness of the pork belly very nicely contrasted by the kimchi. This one was better than the other one. However, both bao buns were just about average, maybe three out of five. Next, I got the potato croquette or koroke in Japanese. You get two pieces for $4. This is like mashed potatoes that are lightly breaded with panko breadcrumbs and deep fried. It's supposed to be very crispy on the outside with a soft potato mixture inside. These were cooked very well. They were indeed crispy on the outside. I used my chopsticks to break them apart because the inside is very soft. In other places, sometimes they'll put a little bit more inside along with the soft potato mixture. Sometimes they'll have a little bits of vegetables or even a little bit of meat. These weren't fancy. They didn't have too many things on the inside. Just your basic soft potato mixture. Nevertheless, they were very good. These are like hash browns to me. Just a good potato taste with a very crispy breading on the outside. I'll give these a 5 out of 5. This is something I didn't expect to find on the menu, especially at a ramen shop or a noodles and rice bowl kind of place. This is the miso black cod. Usually this is a high class item. This usually costs quite a bit. It was only $13 here and it kind of looked like it was $13, but still it's miso black cod. Cod is a very good tasting fish. I love cod. It's just that when it came out, it seemed a bit small. But usually these kind of items are pretty small. This didn't look very good. It looked a little bit dry compared to some of the black cod that I've had. But I gotta remind myself, I'm not at a high-end restaurant like Jing in Summerlin. 
This was last year when I got their Miso Black Cod. This went for $30 last February and it was a little bit smaller than the one I got here. It was exquisite. It was really good. But I had to take small bites just to make it last. Here it was $13 for a quality that was maybe a little less than what I'm used to. But it was still good. If you're in the mood for fish, this was actually worth it. $13. It might not be the best quality, but some of the bites were actually pretty moist. It had a good flavor. Some parts were a little dry and a little salty, but I'll give this a 4 out of 5. As I mentioned before, the menu here is pretty big. They have all kinds of ramen here. I was impressed with the selection. They even had cream pasta such as mentaiko and a seafood cream pasta. I was a little bit skeptical of the cream pasta because I haven't found anyone to compare with oodle noodle. Check out my video on oodle noodle. But the spicy short rib ramen caught my attention. One downside to ordering this one is it comes with a preset spicy level. You can't choose your spicy level like at other places. It comes as a spicy level 5 or 6, but you can get the spicy sauce on the side. I do highly recommend this ramen. The spicy short rib ramen was the surprise for me. I didn't expect much. In fact, I was doubtful that it was going to be as good as some of the other places, but this one surprised me. This was a full on 5 out of 5 stars. The broth was what blew me away. The broth was amazing. The noodles were just pretty standard. Not the best bouncy noodles for a Japanese ramen place. But it wasn't bad either. I actually enjoyed the noodles. The broth, however, was the star. Not only was the broth better than I expected, but this broth was one of the most flavorful broths I've had. I don't know what could have gone into this broth to make it so flavorful. The short rib? Was it the paprika, the red chili pepper flakes? Was it MSG? Was it crack? Whatever it was, it was an amazing broth. The spice wasn't bad. The spice wasn't too spicy, but I could distinctly smell the fragrance of the red pepper flakes. It resembled a lot of the Korean broths, only more. It was definitely a meat broth that had a very good flavor with the spices working through it. The short ribs were very tender and the bone was very easy to remove. This amazing bowl of ramen warranted a video as this was a surprise. The broth was stellar and spectacular. The noodles were good. The short rib was delicious. This spicy short rib ramen was so good it made me wonder how good the other traditional ramen bowls were. I wish I had the chance to try the other ones. I may have to come back and try the other ones. The shrimp here was added on as an extra. Usually it doesn't come with shrimp. You get a half of a soft boiled egg as part of the dish. If you'd like more added on, you can add on more for a little bit extra. I wasn't so sure about adding shrimp to a short rib spicy ramen, but it actually worked out well. Everything was good. The broth was so good that I think I could have added anything into this and it would have still been good. The broth was that good. Next they have something called the King Tonkatsu. This is the pork cutlet breaded in panko. They have a king size one here. They even have an eating challenge here where if you finish three of these in 20 minutes, you get a free t-shirt, a free meal, and your picture on the wall. But I wasn't interested in any kind of a challenge. How good is this tonkatsu? Well, it was very thin and honestly, it was a little bit dry. It was a lot dry. The sauce was not your classic tonkatsu sauce. It had a lot of ketchup in it. I could taste the ketchup. This is my favorite place for tonkatsu. It's at Tonton Katsuya, just down the street. You can see the difference. These are the thick cut tonkatsu, which comes with a classic tonkatsu sauce, which is excellent. I know it's not fair to compare with the tonkatsu specialty restaurant, this being a ramen shop, but I just had to show you this. If you haven't been to Tong Tong Katsuya, you need to watch my video and go there. This is a really good place for tonkatsu. Best in town. That's the opinion of many people who've been to this restaurant. 
I wasn't expecting the tonkatsu here to be of the same quality as tonton katsuya. However, I did expect it to be fried a little bit better. These were dried out. I would give this a 1 out of 5. Very poor quality tonkatsu. The sauce wasn't very good either. For dessert, I got the honey toast. It's a pretty good sized honey toast. Most honey toasts are pretty good sized if they do it right. This is $9, so this is going to be a pretty good sized honey toast. I should have gotten vanilla ice cream. I think vanilla ice cream gives you that milky, creamy taste more than a flavored ice cream. This didn't have too much honey, so it wasn't overly sweet. Sometimes a giant honey toast like this is a little bit hollowed out, but this one had good chunks of tender toast inside. This one was actually pretty good. I gave this a 4 out of 5. Even though some of the items that I ordered wasn't the best that I've had, this place still has some really good food. The ramen was spectacular. And they have a lot of dishes that I didn't order that may be good. They have a really big selection here. There's a lot of good looking things on the menu. I'll post a little bit of the menu at the end of this video so that you can have a look yourself. I think this place is worth going to because of the big selection of the menu. It's pretty big. And the ramen was really super. And they have a variety of drinks here too. Have you ever had this Japanese soda? The bottle is sealed with a marble at the top and you get a special tool to push in the marble. Sometimes it can be a little bit challenging, but the flavor of the soda is unique. I would describe the taste as a very fragrant Sprite. But in the Southwest, if you're craving ramen or rice bowls, they have some really good looking dishes. The ramen I know is excellent and the rice dishes also look very good. Check out the menu, check out this place if you're in the Southwest, it's not bad. Even though it didn't get the highest marks. They have a lot of dishes that you wouldn't normally find at ramen shops. So that was a big surprise because of the big wide selection here. And the ramen was surprisingly good, which means there could be a bunch of other dishes I didn't get to try that are really good. So that's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.